Today's entire khatira is about an animal. Which animal do you think I'm going to be talking about? The camel of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, why would I talk about the camel of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? We will find out, inshallah ta'ala. This camel story is actually a summary of the entire seerah. And so many incidents happened on it and as a part of its life. And fiqhi rulings can be derived as we're going to discuss today. And theological benefits as well. So we have, for example, from the very beginning of the story of the camel, the first entrance of this begins when the Prophet decided to migrate to Medina. For 40, 50 years of the Prophet's life, he did not have the wherewithal to purchase a camel. And he had no need for a camel. So the bulk of his life, he did not own a camel. He did not have a camel. When Allah Azza wa Jal commanded him to migrate to Medina, that was when he needed a camel. And so he told Abu Bakr as-Siddiq to purchase two camels. And Abu Bakr as-Siddiq understood, inshallah, that he's going to be the second person. It wasn't clear yet, but he hoped this was the premonition that will be the second person. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq purchased two camels from the tribe of Banu Qushayr. And the cost of these two was 800 dirhams. And he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, this one is for you, Ya Rasulallah. And it is a gift to you. And the Prophet said, La bithaman Ya Abu Bakr. No, I have to purchase it with its price. I'm not going to take it for free. This was not the methodology of our Prophet to take advantage like this. So he paid 400 dirhams for the camel. I calculated today roughly what that would be in our modern US dollars. It's a little bit over a thousand dollars. Now we will say thousand dollars, that's so little money. But for those who didn't have a steady income, for those who don't have a salary, the bulk of people, a thousand, uh, 400 dirhams was a mini fortune. So the process him spent the bulk of his money on that one camel. The name of the camel, of course, is Qaswa. It is most likely that the tribe named the camel this. Why? Because camels, if you don't know, they actually are very intelligent animals. And they are trained to respond to their names. And they form relationships with their owners and masters, very strong relationships. And so the name Qaswa was given by the tribe before the Prophet ﷺ acquired it. And it continued throughout the, the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Now the name Qaswa, what does it mean? Qaswa, like most animal names, it doesn't really have any type of noble meaning. It basically means a camel whose ear has been marked or signed. Qaswa's ear had not been marked or signed, but it was just a name given to it. And it was also common to have rhyming names for the same animal. So Qaswa was also called Al-Adba, very rarely, but the general name was Al-Qaswa. How old was Al-Qaswa when it was purchased? Some sources say four years old, some say seven years old. In the age of camel years, this is like 17, 18. Like fresh, young. Camels stay with their mothers for four to five years. So Qaswa was purchased right when it becomes an adult. Right, we say 18, 17, that age, equivalent human years. Right when it's able to be independent and have a new owner, that's when Al-Qaswa was gifted to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Qaswa remained the only animal, the only camel, excuse me, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam owned until he passed away. Qaswa was the animal that the Hijrah occurred on. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was hiding in Ghari Thawr and Qaswa was brought to him on the third day. And on the third day on Qaswa, he marched to Medina. And the famous incident that took place between Suraqa, the famous story of Suraqa, you know, the, the, the yeah, bracelets, it happened on Qaswa. And Qaswa was the camel that the people of, the people of uh, Quba saw when they saw the Prophet coming. They saw Qaswa first in the distance. That was the sign the Prophet had arrived in Medina. And when he walked into Medina on Qaswa, he's riding on Qaswa, everybody tried to take the reign of Qaswa. And our Prophet ﷺ said, leave Qaswa alone, for Allah is commanding Qaswa. The Prophet ﷺ has owned Qaswa for two weeks, and already he is saying, this is a special animal. 
This is a special animal. Leave Qaswa alone. Don't hold on to it. Everybody wanted to take Qaswa to their tribe. And the Prophet said, leave it. Allah is commanding it. Innaha ma'mura. And so Qaswa walked through the city of Medina until it stopped at what is currently the front entrance of Medina where the Imam enters from, from the front of Medina, Haram, Masjid al-Haram. Qaswa stopped right there. And the Prophet said, this shall be our Masjid. So we owe it to Qaswa. Of course, Allah commanded Qaswa. Masjid al-Nabawi, its demarcation took place at the hands of, should I say hands of, or paws of? At, what do you, I don't know, is it camel paw, hooves. Mashallah, we have here a veterinarian. Better than me, definitely. Hooves, you're right. It is hooves, isn't it, right? At the hooves of Qaswa, of course, Allah commanded, obviously, right? But it was Qaswa that parked or, you know, not even parked, what is it? Sat down? No, there must be a better word. You, huh? What is it? No, no, there's this, there must be a technical term. I'm not a veterinarian, but sat down is the term we'll use. Where Qaswa sat down, that is where Masjid al Nabawi. There was an empty plot there, and the Prophet said, We have to purchase this plot from the orphans, and Masjid al Nabawi was built. And in front of that, or some reports say Qaswa traveled another distance, some reports say in front of that, Abu Ayyub al Ansari's house, where the Prophet lived for six months while his house was built. When the Prophet migrated on Qaswa, the Quraysh used the name Qaswa in their poetry against Islam and against the Prophet He never owned a camel. He never owned a camel until the Hijrah. And he used the camel to leave Mecca. And so the worst enemy of Islam, one of the worst, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt. Do you know who Uqba is? Uqba is the one who threw the entrails of a dead animal on the Prophet when he was in Sajda. That is Uqba. When the Prophet migrated, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt, he versified in poetry, يا راكب الناقة القصوى هاجرنا عما قليل تراني راكب الفرس وعل رمحي فيكم ثم أنهله والسيف يأخذ منكم كل ملتبس O oh you who's riding on Qaswa O oh you who's riding on Qaswa meaning who the Prophet Sallam and who fled away from us just wait عما قليل in a short period of time you shall see me in my armor and I will be sharpening my arrow and my sword, riding on my horse, and you will find no refuge against me. So he threatened the Prophet ﷺ, and he called him Sahibu Raqibul Qaswa, the one who's riding Qaswa. Of course, the Battle of Badr takes place in the first year of the Hijrah, and the, sec the second year, meaning one year after the Hijrah. Uh, of course, the Hijrah takes place in one year. So the second year of the Hijrah, one year after the Hijrah, the Battle of Badr takes place. And the Prophet ﷺ is riding Qaswa in the Battle of Badr. And on Qaswa, the victory of Badr takes place. And Uqba is captured. And all of the prisoners of Badr are forgiven, except for three or four. And Uqba is number one on this list. This person shall not be forgiven for all of his past crimes and sins. And so Uqba was executed and Qaswa is right there looking at the entire uh, surroundings. The Battle of Badr was the greatest victory up until that point in time. The Prophet wanted to inform the people of Medina of the victory. So he gave Qaswa to Zayd ibn Haritha. And he said to Zayd, you ride my camel. Why? Because two reasons. Number one, his camel was the fastest camel. And number two, it is a positive omen. You recognize the camel of the Prophet and you see it coming back. Generally speaking, the custom was that if there's bad news, the camel owner has died, the camel comes back empty into the city. As a sign, it is a token, whatnot. When you have somebody else using that camel galloping quickly, this means the owner of the camel has sent the camel with good news. So the Prophet ﷺ sent Zayd ibn Haritha on Qaswa, and he's marching in, jogging in, racing into the city, and he's shouting out, Uqba has been killed, Abu Jahl has been killed, Fulan has, and he goes over the entire list until some of the people thought Zayd has lost his mind. It's not possible that all of these 70 people have been killed and Zayd is riding the animal of the Prophet and the rumor accidentally or incorrectly spread 
Astaghfirullah, but maybe the Prophet is no longer and Zayd has lost his mind, become delirious and he's riding Qaswa because of this. They couldn't believe that Badr was such a victory. But the point is the Prophet chose Qaswa to ride into the city. Qaswa had a special pen that where the camels live close to Baqir, Janat al-Baqir, Baqir al-Gharqad. And it so happened in early Islam that a group of Bedouins raided the city and stole Qaswa along with some other animals. You know, in those days, you had the fear of enemy attacks and you had the fear of bandits, robbers. In this case, this isn't the Quraysh attacking Medina. This is bandits. This is highway robbery. So a group of people stole Qaswa and other animals that were in the outskirts of the city. And there was a female shepherd, shepherdess. They took her as well. And they took her and they fled outside the city. And Allahu A'lam what they would have done with her. So the Sahaba, they became panicked. Their search for, for the lady, for Qaswa was going on. And in the middle of the night, the lady managed to, Sahabiya, she's a Muslim a lady. She managed to loosen her bounds, her ties. And she walked over to the area where all the camels that had been stolen were. And she wanted to ride a camel to go back into Medina. Every camel she came close to didn't recognize her. And so it made the noise of camels. What is the noise of camels? Is it a neigh? Is it a grunt? Is it a bark? Whatever it is, what is the noise of a camel? Camel noise, okay. I think it is a grunt if I'm not mistaken. Huh? Neighing is a horse. I'm not sure. Somebody Google it quickly and tell me. I think it's a grunt of a camel because you have technical terms for these. So the, the, the camel made that grunting noise because it didn't recognize the lady. And she kept on going camel to camel until Qaswa came, she came across. She didn't know it's Qaswa. She didn't. She's just trying to save herself, right? She's in the middle of the night. She wants to flee back. So she jumped on to the one camel that understood what's going on and allowed her to ride in the middle of the night. And that is Qaswa. And as she's galloping back into the city, now she looks back, she is free. She knows she's made it. She says, Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, I promise you another. I promise you an oath that as soon as I get back to Medina, so she wants to thank Allah. What does she say she's going to do? I'll sacrifice this camel. Ya Latif. Instead of thanking the camel, hugging the camel, kissing the camel, as soon as I get back to Medina, I'll sacrifice this camel on your behalf. So she made another in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? When she went back to the city, the day breaks, she tells the Sahaba where everybody is. They go and they get rid of the bandits, you know, uh, take care of them, get all the stuff back. The next day she walks into the masjid. She says, Ya Rasulullah, I need your camel back. He says, why? She said, Inni nadhartu nadharan. I made another, a promise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna janillah, if Allah saves me, la anharannaha. I'm gonna sacrifice, you know, qaswa. So the Prophet smiled and said, Bi'sama What's an evil thanks you have given back to her? You know, meaning as a joke, don't say the word evil. Yani, how unfortunate, like the camel saved you and instead you are wanting to kill it. Right? What a bad thing that you are rewarding the camel for. And then he said, and this is a fiqhi principle. From this incident, this hadith is in Sahih Muslim. From this incident, we learn some basic fiqh. What do we learn? Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا وفاء لنذن في معصية الله ولا فيما لا يملك ابن آدم. There is no fulfilling of the nadir over something that you over something that is a, a disobedience to Allah. This case is not a disobedience to Allah. And over something that you do not own. You couldn't have made this nether because you don't own this camel. This is a nether that you cannot fulfill. You must give the kafara of the nether. You cannot. So when you make a nether, you must make a nether that is permissible and that is something you're capable of doing. You cannot make a nether of the haram or of something that's beyond your control. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Another uh, incident of Qaswa that we learn a lot of fiqh from, uh, Sa'id ibn Musayyib said that Qaswa was the fastest camel 
and no camel could outrace Qaswa. Once a Bedouin came with another camel and a race was held. A race was held in Medina of the camels and that Bedouin's camel won the race against Qaswa. The Sahaba felt sad that Qaswa had lost. Pause here. Wallahi, what love for the Prophet Isn't this mind-boggling? It's an animal. It's a camel. It's just a play race. But their love for the Prophet was so much. The Sahaba hazinu. They felt distressed and sad that the camel of the Prophet had lost the race. So the Prophet spoke to them to calm them down. Amazing, isn't it? Over a camel, he spoke to them and he taught them some basic theology that we all learn. And he said, Innahu haqqun ala Allahi. It is Allah's principle and rule that whenever something is raised up, Allah Azza wa Jal also brings it down. Don't worry, this is life. Only Allah is Dul Jalali Wal Ikram. Only Allah is Al Qahar. As for every created object, even those that are beloved to Allah, the Prophet had Badr and he had Uhud. This is the reality of life. So he taught them a lesson in theology through Qaswa. It's no big deal. You don't have to read in just because a Bedouin's camel won. And subhanAllah, what maturity by the way, and what beautiful aqidah as well. No human being, no creation of Allah is consistently winning. It's no big deal. Sometimes it'll win, sometimes it'll lose. This is the reality of... Now from this as well, there's the issue of having competitions and races between animals. This is completely halal when there's no gambling. And our scholars have derived this, right? The haram is the gambling. But you can have races and it's fun to have races and whatnot, no problem. So this is another fiqh uh, ruling as well. Another interesting story about Qaswa reported in the Mu'jam al-Kabir of al-Tabarani and Ibn Sa'ad uh, al-Maghazi of al-Waqidi that once uh, Qaswa was nowhere to be found. Because you know camels, they have a pen, but they're allowed to wander and feed on themselves. They're not like sheep. You don't need to, you know, uh, once the camel is trained, the camel knows where to go back. So you don't always need a shepherd for the camel. Unlike sheep and goats, you always need a shepherd. So one day Qaswa was nowhere to be found. So the Prophet ﷺ sent out people to find Qaswa. One of the leaders of the hypocrites sitting in his house amongst the other munafiqun said, this man pretends, yaz'um, he assumes or he claims that Allah speaks to him from the heavens and he can't even find his own camel on earth. La hawla quzilla billah making fun of the Prophet ﷺ. Jibreel came and told him what that munafiq said. So the Prophet ﷺ stood up in the masjid and said, Ayyuhan nas, O people, it has reached me that some people are saying this. And he knew who it was, but he didn't mention the name. Fawallahi, I am just a bashar. And I know only what Allah tells me to know or allows me to know. I don't claim to have ilm al-ghayb. I know only what Allah tells me or allows me to know and he has just informed me that Qaswa is stuck in such and such a valley its rain has become entrenched to a tree he said this in the masjid when the emissaries were still searching for Qaswa so they went and they found exactly as described Qaswa was eating food and had gone around the tree and it's you know it's rain it's harness it came entangled, so it couldn't come back. And so Allah Azza wa Jal told him where Qaswa is to teach this munafiq a lesson. Beautiful lesson. Our Prophet does not know ilm al ghayb But if Allah tells him, he knows whatever Allah tells him. And when somebody tried to mock the Prophet in this manner, Allah Azza wa Jal told him, Qaswa is over there. This is yet another benefit from Qaswa. Qaswa was the camel that March to Hudaybiyah as well. And when it was outside of Mecca, Qaswa just abruptly stopped in its tracks and refused to go on. And the Sahaba became irritated at Qaswa. And they said, go on, hal hal, which means move on, on and on. And Qaswa did not do anything. Rather, it sat down. So somebody said, 
Qaswa has become stubborn. It's being rude. Camels, by the way, some of them, it's well known, they have the capacity to be rude. If they don't like you, they will treat you rudely. This is well known. They recognize somebody who is mean to them and they treat them rudely. Our Prophet defended the honor of Qaswa. He defended the honor of a camel. And he said, no, Qaswa has not become stubborn. And nor is this a khuluq that she has ever been guilty of. This is not Qaswa's manner to be stubborn. Rather, the one who blocked the elephants from Mecca has now blocked Qaswa as well. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told her to stay here. So this is a sign from Allah that I shouldn't proceed. And then where Qaswa stopped, that's where the Treaty of Hudaybiyah took place. And that's where the entire incident took place, where Qaswa stopped and Allah Azza wa Jal told the Prophet to stay over there. The next year after Hudaybiyah, it was on Qaswa that the Prophet came back and performed the Umrah, his first Umrah, the Umratul Qadha in the seventh year of the Hijrah. And on Qaswa, he rode and he did the Tawaf. He did the Tawaf on Qaswa. And from this, the scholars have derived that you may do Tawaf on a mount or an animal without any reason to do so. It is allowed. It's not as if he was sick, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He did Tawaf on Qaswa. And he did Tawaf on Qaswa later on in Hajjatul Wada as well. No problem. And you know, last century when the first king of that kingdom took power, he purchased a Rolls Royce, drives it into Mecca, and he did Tawaf in the Rolls Royce around the Kaaba. And the scholars were asked, how can he do this? And the scholars said, well, technically his jaiz, Qaswa did tawaf on the camel. Technically jaiz. And these days, some people use the buggies when they're sick or whatnot. You don't need to be sick, actually. It's allowed to do tawaf sitting down. You don't need to be standing up. We learned this from Qaswa. Qaswa, multiple times Allah revealed Quran on Qaswa. Multiple times. Quran came down on Qaswa. For example, after the Treaty of Hudaybi, when the Prophet is going back, Umar ibn Khattab came up to him and spoke to him and he didn't respond. And he thought maybe, you know, the Prophet was angry with him. Then the Prophet recited, what did he recite? Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. This came down on Qaswa. In the Hajjatul Wada, Ibn Abbas said, I saw Qaswa sit down because Surah Al-Ma'idah was revealed and the weight of Surah Al-Ma'idah was so heavy, the Prophet ﷺ could stand it. Qaswa had to sit down. As a human being, the Prophet ﷺ could bear that, but the animal could not bear it. And Qaswa had to sit down. And one more verse we're going to come to at the end was also uh, revealed. Qaswa was the animal the Prophet ﷺ rode on when he conquered Mecca, Fath Mecca. And Ibn Abbas and Anas and others say, we saw the Prophet ﷺ enter from Kuday, Babi Kuday. He entered riding Qaswa, saying Allahu Akbar. And his head was so low, it was touching the neck of Qaswa, bobbing up and down. It was touching the neck of Qaswa out of humility. You know when an emperor, when an arrogant general conquers a city, puffs his chest out, puts his head up, but that's not our Prophet ﷺ. When he conquered Mecca, his head was lowered so much so it was almost touching the neck of Qaswa. And on Qaswa, he marched through entire Mecca until he entered the Kaaba. And on Qaswa, he did Tawaf. And as the Sahaba are seeing the symbolic sign of Tawaf in Hajjatul Wada, the books of Sirah say, they began to say takbir so loud, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, that Mecca began to tremble from the takbirat. Can you imagine that scene? And when he finished the tawaf on Qaswa, still on Qaswa, he took his staff and he walked to every single idol and he tapped it and he said, which ayah? Which ayah did he recite? And every time he touched an idol, it just collapsed and demolished and disintegrated. On Qaswa, he's doing all of this. This is the fath Makkah taking place, the eighth year of the Hijrah. Right after fath Makkah, 
The Battle of Hunayn takes place two months after this. And the Battle of Hunayn, if you remember, they trapped the companions, the Sahaba. They had the arrows from the top. There was a valley. They trapped so much so some of the Sahaba didn't understand what's going on and they fled. Naturally, it's human instinct, right? Qaswa did not flee. Qaswa remained firm where it was because the Prophet did not tell it to leave. And in spite of the arrows and in spite of Qaswa stayed there. And from Qaswa, the Prophet called out to the Sahaba, come back, come back. And when they heard his voice, they came back and they fought in Hunayn and they eventually won the victory of Hunayn. It was on Qaswa that the Prophet went to Badr. And the famous incident that he had with him, Ali and Al Abbas, or others say Ali and Uthman, it depends on who, uh, some of the reports have different things, that there weren't enough camels. If you remember Badr, there weren't enough camels. Three people were sharing every camel. And so the Prophet also had two people assigned. And they said to him, Ya Rasulullah, I mean, what would you say? Ya Rasulullah, you ride and we'll walk. It's okay, we're young, what not? The Prophet smiled and said, No. Neither are the two of you any younger than me, even though they were, but he's saying, yeah. And nor am I in any less need of the ajr than you. I also need the ajr. We will share. And so, even though he was the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he shared taking turns, one out of every three. Everybody, two people walk, one person, and they keep on doing this the entire journey of Tabuk. This is Qaswa. And then, in the ninth year of the Hijrah after Tabuk by two months, the Prophet ﷺ sent Abu Bakr as-Siddiq to perform the only Hajj in human history where Muslims attended and Mushrikun attended at the same time. Only time in human history. And he sent Abu Bakr as-Siddiq to lead a group of Muslims and to announce that after this year, no Mushrikun can come for Hajj. So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was going and he's going towards, going towards Mecca. On the way there, he hears the grunting of the camel. And from the distance, he says, this is the noise of Qaswa. Can you believe he recognizes Qaswa? And he turns around thinking the Prophet is coming. But it wasn't the Prophet It was Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Prophet had sent Ali on Qaswa, the fastest camel, in order to catch up to Abu Bakr before he got to Mecca. And Abu Bakr became a little bit anxious. Are you substituting me? Am I being demoted? Like, obviously, it's human nature. The Prophet put him in charge. This is a, no doubt it's an honor. Then Ali is coming on Qaswa. Abu Bakr feels, am I, am I moving down? Are you getting in charge? And Ali radiallahu anhu says, no, rather the Prophet sent me as his envoy to announce on Arafah the first verses of Surah Tawbah. You can read the Surah sections, right? And so Qaswa was used. Why was Qaswa used? To catch up to Abu Bakr before he got to Mecca. The fastest camel was Qaswa to get there. And so on the day of Arafah, Ali radiallahu anhu recited these verses from Qaswa. And the final point of Qaswa, the final incident for us, Qaswa was the camel that the Prophet did the entire Hajj on. And there's literally, and I'm not going to go over all of them, 10 at least reports about Qaswa and Hajjatul Wada. From Mina to Muzdalifa to Arafat. And Qaswa features in every single you know, episode of, 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 of Hajjatul Wada. And who was riding with the Prophet? Sometimes it's Jabir ibn Abdullah, sometimes it's Usama ibn Zayd, sometimes it's Ibn Abbas, and each one is saying, I was riding Qaswa and this happens. I was riding Qaswa and this happens. So Qaswa is an integral part of Hajjatu al Wada and the Prophet. So multiple things of fiqh of this thing, for example, that uh, in the Hajjatul Wada, the Prophet was standing on was sitting on Qaswa and making dua on Qaswa in Arafat. So it's allowed to make dua when you're sitting on your in your car in your bus, you make dua as well, no problem. And this is really interesting. He used Qaswa to give the most famous khutbah in all of human history. Khutbatul Wada. A lot of you don't know this. Many people don't know this. He gave that khutbah, at least portions of it, on Qaswa. 
standing on qaswa like standing means he's going to stand up on the saddle right not like you don't stand on the back of the camel but you stand up on the saddle standing on qaswa and he's addressing the entire crowd and he gives that famous sermon that we've all memorized since we were children that was given on qaswa and it was during the last days of hajj on qaswa that Allah revealed one of the final surahs in which the Prophet ﷺ knew this was the end. Ibn Abbas says, Ibn, Ibn Umar says, excuse me, that this surah came down when the Prophet ﷺ was in the days of Mina after Hajj and he was on Qaswa. Idha ja'a nasrullahi wal fatih. Surah Al Fatih came down. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa'arafa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam annahu al-wada'a. The Prophet knew this is it. And then the hadith goes on. So, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتِحِ came down on Qaswa. And from this surah, the Prophet interpreted, my end is near. And as you know, when he came back on Qaswa to Medina, within a week he fell sick. And a few weeks after that, a few 10 days after that, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. And the story does not end here. Qaswa was 15, 16 years old, 17 max, it depends on which age he was purchased. And when the Prophet sallam passed away, Qaswa began to cry until it became blind. And in its grief, it stopped eating and drinking normally and within a month it passed away even though qaswa was 15 60 so a camel lives 40 to 50 years a camel on average lives 40 to 45 years so qaswa was the equivalent of like 35 years old human years but without the prophet he couldn't it couldn't manage and in grief it couldn't live normally. In grief, it passed away less than a month after our Prophet Wasallam passed away. To conclude here, why are we talking about a camel? Because our love for the Prophet Wasallam is so strong that it includes those animals that associated with him and those animals that he took and those animals that loved him. Our love for him وسلم, is so strong that we want to know everything about him and we want to know everything about the animals. And if Qaswa in his grief can, or in her grief I should say, can become so overcome and distraught, then how about me and you? So every information about the Prophet وسلم, including information about Qaswa brings life to our heart. And I conclude with this poem that our Arab brethren are very familiar with. أمر على الديار ديار ليلى وقبل ذا الجدار وذا الجدار وما حب الديار شغفنا قلبي ولكن حب من سكن الديار. This is why we want to talk about قصوى. It's not the camel. It is the memories that come with the camel and what is associated with the camel and the love that the camel itself had. That's what we are interested in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the love that we all have for the Prophet our strongest love in this world. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us with our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the akhirah. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.